y'all. Welcome into another episode of That's Fucked Up. Yes! All right, in case y'all didn't notice, we're going up, motherfuckers. We're in yeah. complex. I know, you know we, got, I mean? we got plastered everywhere. Motherfucking world star posted everywhere, us out. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Uh, yeah. And today, <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah. I would like what to apologize does- to the people <laughs> for Alejandro. <laughs> One, you know he's always on some bullshit. He showed Alejandro, up here in that wow. weird custom shirt. Now he's got this ski mask on. Do you have a robbery plan later on for today? Maybe. Maybe. S- okay. Maybe. But since we're going up, we're in complex, you know? I just got to be careful how I move around, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, uh, man. We got the homeboy David Sebastian's yes. wild Woo. ass in the house today. Welcome in, Dave. What's up, bro? You got to add iconic in front of that. The iconic. Damn. Iconic. That's true. <laughs> but before we get into my homeboy, David Sebastian, I would like to address uh, an issue with some of you motherfuckers. Fuckers online. What, are you we've talk, had are so you many guests. <laughs> <laughs> we've had guests in here, and I haven't been able to address it. No one has insulted me more than the fucking smoking community. <laughs> you cigarette smoking bastards can suck no, my no, uh, dick. Uh, I'm with the smoking community on this. What the? Dude, f- dude, what happened? Your comment was Fuck ridiculous. Them. I'm with them. I've never been trashed by any more of anyone. Though. <laughs> Fuck his hair. Fuck him. He's a piece of shit. Well, fuck you, smoking bastards. Oh, one I one still guys, stand man. by everything no, I said. Yeah. If listen. you smoking your cigarette in your car going down the road, you roll the fucking window. Up that's and you ridiculous. keep the smoke in your car. Nobody else no, want to no, smoke. That's ridiculous. If Everybody it, has the right to do whatever the fuck it, they want. Keep outside. it in your car. They can do whatever they want outside. You should have stayed your ass at home. I'm with the smoking community, even though I don't smoke. <laughs> you guys are sick. <laughs> you guys are sick. Anyways, Dave, what you got going on these days, man? What is happening with you? The legend of downtown, Mr. Skid Row himself. Well, you gotta first announce what he does, who he is. That's what, yes, I said. I said, let us know what's going on. What is going on is not who he is and all that other stuff. Yeah, You're man. already fucking up. Yeah, you just I need, got here. I need you to give me, like, the, the full thing. <laughs> Look, um, yeah. give him the you drum can roll. See, see, we're back with AD interrupting. Wait a minute, can you for move no your fucking water? reason. Hey, listen, that oh. water company has not paid I us yet. I didn't see it on there. I don't think... I don't <laughs> how, think how, how about this? Water company has not how, paid us yet. How about I this? Kirkland I tell the people him. who I am. Yeah, That's what I know, said. David. I let said, him. let us know. You said what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. But not what I've done. See, I'm so glad there's a guest that comes on that corrects you. I feel like that's every week. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, my name is David Sebastian. I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised. And uh, I'd like to consider myself a staple in the community, man. I, not only do I make good art that makes people feel things, I, I make great art that, that helps people as well. So I am uh, a dedicated servant to, to just humanity. And uh, I make awesome music and I make cool art in clothes. All right. And I'm a sex symbol. That's You're true. You're a sex symbol. Yes. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Part time. You know. Part time. Part time. Yeah. Porn? <laughs> no. <laughs> Were you making OnlyFans? <laughs> no, no. I'm just, Dave, you ain't got it, no OnlyFans? It's just the vi- it's just the, it's just, it's, it's just the vibration of, you know, my, my lifestyle, you know? Okay. Dave, you should you have an only sexy fans, life, you sick you know? bastard. I feel you. Look, J- age Japanese whiskey, Marvin Gaye <laughs> in the background. I wake up like that. And it's okay. just it's just a vibe. Look. AD, I know you you take down a big girl or two in your time. Oh, God. Couple. You know you love them. Mm. AD won't fuck with nothing over 140. Never. That's his rule. That's my rule. Why is that? Huh? I'm Why not that, that strong. <laughs> You're stronger than me. I'm not strong. I am not strong. I, I, I don't claim to be a strong guy. My back, I have a hurt back. I don't do, I don't do anything past 140. It makes no sense to me. I'm not I, that strong. But listen. Welcome, welcome. What's the biggest yeah, you, you got guys. down with, Dave? <laughs> What's the biggest bitch you ever been down with? Well, she wasn't a bitch. I actually love her. <laughs> I, I, I hope you hear this and I'll send you some flowers. I love you. You know, I would probably say like two... 250, 250. <laughs> she was definitely 280 then. <laughs> it was, it was, 280? Listen, I'm going to be honest, man. And was I, she tall? Listen to me. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> So I'm I'm an adventurous motherfucker, Listen, right? Listen, that's an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
that's an adventure. <laughs> 280 is an adventure. <laughs> no, bro, that's like a uh, that's like climbing Mount Everest, man. Listen, Absolutely. What I'm telling you is, is I've been with conventionally beautiful women, right? Like the like, oh, she could be on the front cover of fucking Vogue or something. Like I've I fucked with like supermodels and bad bitches, right? But then there's something in me mm. living this human experience. Get right? out of you, Dave. No, just hear, no, just hear me out. This is like some real shit. Like we, we're a part of this thing called the human experience, right. and the best thing we can do is experience. And a lot of us sometimes get uh, so stuck in these preconceived notions of I'm perception there. that we're like, I'm only gonna fuck this type of person. Person or this type of person where there's an array of experiences that you don't even know you like yet. Like, like I went to uh, the game's party, right? Like, a uh, game had a, like a, the, and the tallest girl there, she was like six eight, nigga. She was. Mm. I don't know why the tallest women are fucking attracted to me. It's, they can pick your little ass up, Dave. <laughs> How tall for the people since you're how tall are you, Dave? I'm glad you brought up like experiments. Oh, yeah, you know, how tall oh, are you, Dave? No, no, I'm five three. Alejandro, you can't bring oh, okay. up the gay experiences. Dave, no, no, <laughs> it, I'll meet you in the middle. Uh, a well operated, you know, woman that turned it, you know, yeah. a transgender yeah. woman. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. And That's where you're gonna I, go. I think with I come shit. to the terms that, you know, if I maybe, you know, it will be, it will be a good experience. I'm not down <laughs> to knock it. What so do you think about that? So you did bring you up a, here first, Dave, y'all. So you did. Y'all, no, hold on. You ain't skipping over hey, listen, that. I got to skip you over it. You ain't skipping over I'm that. I'm skipping over y'all that. Y'all already here first. Alejandro just said He's he want to have sex with a transgender no, no, I bitch. I would consider it. That's He's what open. I said. He's call open. Call in. <laughs> All you transgender bitches out there, call into the show. Alejandro is ready. We're going to line you up. We're going to get you well, on. Hold on, let, let, me, let me make a statement real quick. I'm in full support of the trans community in any community. You know, Davis for the people. I have no... I'm talking about more or less... Inter- <laughs> I'm not talking <laughs> intersexual. I'm talking about, like, within, you know, the palette of women. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like... I think albino they consider women are beautiful. Women, I, th- I, think, I think dwarf women are beautiful. <laughs> we're, not, I think- we're not questioning your sexuality. We know Ali- who Alejandro is. Right. Okay, I'm not, we know I'm not defending my sexuality. Up. I'm just telling you, like, like you said, you're not that strong, man. You I'm would not. be. You, I, I know guys who are like, man, I would never. Duh, duh, duh. Plus size women, man, <laughs> are a vibe, no, dog. Eight, bitch, Especially if they dog. smell incredible and just they, they they're just fluffy like biscuits on on a Sunday morning, my nigga. It's like, but do they all smell incredible? I've I've never I, listen <laughs> listen, bro. I, I no 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 turkey, listen, turkey listen, bacon. I, I, I think I think no no listen. He said turkey bacon. <laughs> listen, dog. No no no. Hear me out. Hear me out. I think that is like a a, a fucked up um. What do you call that? Um, uh, stereotype. 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 That big bitches that, stink. That bigger women. <laughs> I stink. would never. I didn't, I didn't think. No, that because was true. because every woman that I've ever that's on, they smell fucking amazing, dog. Yeah. And listen, if you're watching this and you know who you are and you know I'm talking about you, you smell amazing. Mm. They got to spread I know more. Some, listen, Maybe because they got to spread on, more amounts of lotion some, around. I know some. I the know some area. five, eight, fucking hundred and forty-five, thirty-pound model girls who smell like fucking. Acid. Those natural that bitches, like huh? Fuck, Them all like natural bitches. No Dirt. deodorant. Ain't showered yes. in 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. Crystal burns. Well, no, I, I think Crystal that's cool. Burners. I think everybody should experience what they want to experience. For sure. What's up with the 6'8 bitch? I'm just not open to that. What happened with the 6'8 girl okay, at the so game party? Hold on. So other than not being open to that, is there any other type of woman that you wouldn't be open to? Midget. Like not one no, no, no. She a, like 98 I'm knocking, pounds. I knock a midget down. You would? Uh, nice. I'm, I'm open to that. I'm open to that. Ah, no, hell man. yeah. That <laughs> Yo, I'll spank that yo, ass. yo, 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 we, yo, me, me and my, my, my partner, we was driving down Figueroa. Tell me you caught a midget. No, no, listen, we was driving down, <laughs> we was driving down Figueroa the other day, leaving from somewhere, and there's a stroll. You know, there's like hella prostitutes on Figueroa right now, and there was a midget. I didn't know that. There but... was a dwarf prostitute mm. walking down Figueroa with red, a red weed. She got to be making the most money. Little red riding hood. <laughs> She got to be making half off. Shut your ass up. <laughs> this interview is going to give me a Hey, wait, wait, wait. Top off. Have up. you had sex with a midget? What about a midget? You find a, a midget lot of... is anyone. Or, I know no. you'd be wait, finding wait, a lot of people. The, 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 the term is dwarf. The term is dwarf. I think it's little people. I think it's dwarf. 
I don't think dwarf works anymore. Because dwarf and dwarfism, right? No? I don't know. It sounds no, like they, 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 they much changed it. The Lord it. of the Rings. I don't you know? think any of us know. I call somebody. We were talking about what? Hermorphodites or something like that. I found out <laughs> that Hermor- that's Hermor- You can't even say that anymore. Hermaphrodite? Or Herma- well, something like that. What you was can't it? say that? No. Remember the other girl told us we can't say that anymore. It that's like considered like a bad her- term. Because they just her- transgender, transgender now. Her- no, they're not transgender. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yo, that's the crazy thing about switching um, what's appropriate to say is that they switch so fast that by the time you acclimate to what's right to say, you're, like, outdated. You're, yeah. like, sl- slurring. We're definitely something. outdated on this fucking show. That's for sure. There were some girls that came on here. They were She's non- non-binary. non-binary. We didn't even know what the fuck that was. But uh, she, I, didn't, I, didn't, I knew what it was. Okay. We all knew what it was <laughs> except AD. I we all knew what it was I except never, AD. I didn't know people were, like, claiming not to be... Men or women, they were just they. And they were just existing. Yeah, I didn't. They're just I, out there. I, I didn't really get that. I was confused, but she explained it. Listen, I'm all for everybody being whoever the fuck they want to be, but I'm just saying that doesn't necessarily mean I have Clearly, to participate. Fucking in your let self Alejandro image. on this show. I don't want to. I don't want to participate. <laughs> I don't want to participate. Do you see this fucking facial hair? Alan over here, Midwestern white guy has going on <laughs> after he took this fucking ski mask off. He's experimenting. This guy is in a midlife crisis. No, he's experimenting. <laughs> what the hell is going on, Alejandro? Are you okay? I don't know, man. You know Alejandro, what? I know you mentioned the transsexual thing, and I don't want to get the, get away Tra- from David so we could get back to David, but I'm just curious. Have you had that experience yet? Not that I know of. So, huh? I don't Good think answer. so. What are you be getting so. into? <laughs> I don't know. Like you know, like, black it out and shit. Like just throwing yourself in these parties. Just take I, me. No, but David, but no, go on, go back to the six eight girl that you were telling us about at, at well, games I, I, party. I just, I just find it a interesting that out of all the women who would be attracted to me, like this, this the tallest one. You know, I had energy with, and I'm, I'm with it. I'm, I'm really just like. Did you take her down, Dave? No, I didn't. We had some good conversations. The future shall see, but it's not even about taking her down. I just think she's she's cute. She's a cute, cute. Tall, I'll tell you what, your kid woman. would be averaged out to we a normal play, height. We could play some basketball. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's six eight. You five three. You have a six foot normal normal kid. So normal. That's some feet. height. Normal six feet. Yeah, you're a little ass. You know you you down I think there. It's like five nine. The average height. You back with like the yeah, original no, man, species of man. Five ten. Five ten. <laughs> five, ten five five for women. It's considered normal. Five, five for women. Yeah, five, five for women is considered huh. normal. Listen, nice. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be on pictures and videos and stuff like Dame's assistant. We need more content. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm just happy to be on this podcast, bro. I remember the many days, Josh, we would sit in your car smelling like straight bong water. And yeah. you'd be like, yo, we're going to do a podcast one day. And you did, did talk with, about a lot of podcasting. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy you're doing it, man. It took him yeah. a couple months to convince me to do it. It took like a year. <laughs> <laughs> it took like 12 straight fucking months. Nah, this shit's going to blow, man. You guys got a good Well, formula. I just think with it, we're honest on it. We're honest about everyone's experience, and we're open to everyone's experience. Yeah. Each one of us are vastly different from each other. I'm very open. Yeah. We all know that. Jesus Christ. Alejandro, I you think we've talked every Alejandro time. into yeah. being more open. More, yeah, more like, gay. Like, he's becoming more gay for the yeah, show. Absolutely. He doesn't have to do this for he our doesn't. benefit. You don't have to, Alejandro. They're coming you for us. Have to represent They're coming, us. coming for us. Alejandro's like, we'll never make it unless I keep saying okay. Hey, listen. He's the day, the day you go on that transsexual date, we're sending a cameraman with you. Yep. Okay. Because, you know, that kiss, you at the end, that kiss at the end of the night, we got to see that It's going to go further. We'll cut the mics off when you guys go inside. <laughs> He wants Again, to like screen. technology has evolved that now you just cannot tell. Have you ever gone out to West Hollywood? No, nah, I think you're going to be able to tell. Yeah, always. And West you Hollywood, don't want the dip. I tend to stay like, away from if, that area. No, no, no. I, like, I'm not that, welcome. I, not, not. It, it has to be full, fully. Like, like no dick involved. No dick, no dick, no balls, fake It's just titties. a new vagina. Like a new vagina. That's, I don't oh, want to experience I thought you that. Wanted wanted the dick no, in not there. Dick, well, no. I have a question. Have you, have you seen those new vaginas? Do you know what they look like? No, I don't. And do you know how they make those new vaginas? Have you? They, they literally cut your penis in half, and then they turn it inside out. Mm-hmm. Still a dick. I mean, Fuck but the fact <laughs> that it's still a dick. I mean, listen, it's cool. I'm just letting you know. It's like when you eat a hot dog. Do you know how that hot dog is made? As it, long as you know what it is, then you know what it is. Once you find out how that hot dog is made, you don't want no part of that hot dog. Yep. Exactly. David, the one thing that's so crazy, because you've been in the music industry for how long now? Shit, like 
eight, nine years. At this so point. the one thing they always talk about, and you know, we're an outsider when it comes to that industry. So I just wanted you to clear it up for us. Mm -hmm. They talk about a lot of people being undercover gay in that industry. Have you experienced that? Have people approached you? How do you deal with that being the strong person that you are? Like, like, how do you fend that off? If you're fending it off, I don't know. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. like, what? No, I'm just saying. What? I <laughs> no, mean, no, I don't. I don't know. His, yeah. I don't know what's going on. And he's gonna let us know mm. right now. So That's he's fair. asking, have you ever so, so had me. to suck a dick for a deal? Oh, that listen, oh, we see, did, see, God, you're so God crass. Damn, God damn. God damn. What's wrong with you? He's, he's a lot. He's a, he's a fucking barbarian. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously though, we hear about this all the time. <laughs> so especially me. men so, are facing this, so, so hear and me. it scares me. So hear me out. Scares <laughs> Hear me out. So first off, we can't just seclude this to like the music industry, right? The Film industry, okay, right, is highly coveted by you know that energy, the music industry as well. I mean, I think every in industry that's the art industry, you're in that one too. I think every industry that's rooted in entertainment um, at this point is that. But I've I've never personally through my entire journey and I've been in a lot of rooms and I've been with a lot of successful people. No one has ever fortunately pressed me on anything crazy. Right. And I think, I think it's because like, I just don't give that vibe. Like right. I, I, I just don't, I think it's a vibe thing. I think people can like smell like, Oh, he, he'll, he's a little soft. He, he's he's with a little it. soft. And, and listen, I am, I'm, <laughs> Listen, because I know how sensitive you motherfuckers are out there <laughs> listening to this shit. I'm telling you, there is nothing wrong for sucking a dick for a deal. If that's what you need to do. <laughs> if that's what you need to do to get out your mama's crib, change your life, a little dick in it, you know, cool. I'm just, I just never had to do oh it. God. I never would do it. <laughs> Only because... I mean, there's two only because because I'm I'm not gay, so I would I wouldn't do it. But I also wouldn't want to get where I wanted to get and have that looming in my head like <laughs> fuck, man. I had to do that to get here. I, I feel like it would make the wind bittersweet for me. I only want to get to where I'm going because I deserve it. Like my mom told me the other day, she was like, "Play the lotto. I think you'll win." And I'm like, "I don't want to play the lotto because I don't want to win. Because I don't want I don't want to like I want to like I want to." Earn everything I have. I don't I like know if that. that's weird. No, uh, I, I totally get that. Listen, now some of sucking your... a dick is earning everything you have, <laughs> <laughs> so... especially if you're small. <laughs> but you've earned that deal. Ta talking about sucking a dick for a bag. Have you guys heard of the Adam Twenty Two Lena the plug situation? Where for the first time they Adam Twenty Two he and let his, his wife girl have se yeah have uh. sex with a BBC and like he broke the internet they're probably making millions of dollars out of it probably broke her vagina as wait well. a minute yeah. what, what the fuck is a BBC I, I knew you was gonna ask that wait what's that big black cop <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have never figured that shit out anywho. Yeah, hey, I'll start Wait, with man, you. I knew I seen the the black guy talking yeah, about it, yeah. but that's why when you said BBC, I was like, I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah. Anywho, let's start with you. Is there any amount? Because you said something already there, so I probably know your answer. But is there any amount of money that can be given to you no. and your partner for a no. billion dollars? You wouldn't do it. You and your partner just to watch your bitch get fucked. No. He ain't talking about you sucking the dick. Oh, I don't you think you let him ask a question. Like, let's say you're you're married. Would you allow your wife to fuck another guy for a big bag of money, like bi a billion dollars? Let's just a say a billion. How long we been married? <laughs> you absolutely. <laughs> I don't and give a shit. A billion okay. dollars. You better have sex with that man. <laughs> a billion. Okay. Give so, a fuck. Wait a minute. So you letting Donna, Don your wife? I'm forcing. Donna, it's for a billion? <laughs> for a billion? I'm Get sorry. Over there, I'm Donna. sorry, Donna. It's time to work for this fucking one hour in your life. But you have to stay married to them, and they film it. Fuck yeah. I'll watch it. I'm like, hey, kids, look how we got this money. Look at your mom putting that fucking word. That's a lot. Listen, I, wouldn't, I, I couldn't do it. Oh no, that, that's tough. Yeah. That's I, tough. I just wouldn't you do can't, it. No one's going to look at you a the same. A billion yeah, 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 I just dollars? Never, bro, I would just... <laughs> bro. No one will ever see me again to look at me <laughs> anyway. You won't see me anymore. <laughs> I'm going to be Josh like... Josh is a barbarian. <laughs> Donna, forgive him. <laughs> Donna, I guarantee she'll be like, I would. 
<laughs> if it was offered, she's like, you ain't stopping me either. Well, a billion? Well, she is Jewish, and she loves that money. <laughs> hey, man. And she wants that money. We can talk about anything in here except anti-Semitic comments. <laughs> That's not an anti-Semitic comment. It's not going to fly in here. No, not not you can be homophobic. It's not anti-Semitic. Exactly. Oh, wow. Josh, Josh, Josh <laughs> parades for the Jew community. He upholds the Jew community. Jew. Jew. In every, uh, <laughs> the Jew community. You know community. I used to be Jewish, right? Uh, yeah, you still are. I used to be. <laughs> no, you're not. You never were. It goes off your mom's religion. What do you mean? If your dad's Jewish in the Jewish culture, you're not considered Jewish. If your mom's not Jewish, you're not Jewish. My bloodline. Sorry, buddy. Oh. I'm cool being. I'm cool. Your being dad's me. Jewish. <laughs> cool being me. Yeah, but you would have to convert. <coughs> but you do got a Jewish last name. Miklatsky. Yeah. Wow. Miklatsky. Yeah. They'll accept you. Hey, they're trying to get the, you know, the whole land back. <laughs> I am about to rock your world. Babe, you know you can't handle all of this without your sword. Lance a lot. He never has this problem. No, I am King Arthur. I was worthy of Excalibur, and I'm worthy of sword vitality. Now that is a sword fit for a king. But do you know how to use it? Become a better man with sword vitality. You still beefy with Gucci? Remember when you was beefing with Gucci? No. I'm not. <laughs> what, I'm not. Gucci man? <laughs> Fuck no. No, Gucci. Oh, Gucci, the end of the Oh, the, the end. Oh. Yeah. I actually he went had to... a whole bonfire, burned all their shit downtown. There was like fucking bunch of people burning And then the shit. next day, Gucci made that statement and said that they were going to create some mm -hmm. program, blah, blah, blah. And then there's an Atlanta episode that fucking um, Childish Gambino made about the whole thing about brands like that doing racist shit and then creating these like step programs to empower the ghetto blah 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 but the irony was at the end they were like why would they ever fund their demise why would they ever fund people being self-sufficient and not needing them because then who would want to buy gucci but i honestly think all these brands are going down anyway you know why because for the first time in maybe the history of fashion these 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 high-end brand luxury brands right are trying to compete so much with this culture that they're becoming streetwear. And and like look at Louis Vuitton, look at all these brands. They're they're becoming so street that the luxury part of it is just like I don't know, becoming non-existent. I think they're trying to stay too current. Hmm. So fuck the streets. They need to go back to their their shows and I mean I think streetwear should be streetwear and I think luxury <laughs> wear should be fucking luxury wear. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So luxury brands. I think stay any out time in business where... when you try to keep up with the times and you try to yeah. go outside of your natural ethos, I think it's not good. We talk about that a lot, like with Bud Light. They try to do the. They don't know their audience. They try to do the transgender yeah. girl. Lost fucking thirty billion. Thirty. They put a transgender in a girl at, on the can in, a, in an ad. They lost thirty billion since then. People like, won't drink it no more. But yeah, like, they don't even mess with like it. Like in no the more. Midwest and shit, just like on tap for fucking months. That's crazy. <laughs> just gotta throw it out. Whatever I think ad guys idea force. that was trying to do some inclusive shit really fucked that company up. Yeah, yeah. I just you gotta know your audience ultimately. You know, the the beer drinking community, I don't know if that's their audience. Well, obviously, since Budweiser lost thirty million dollars, I mean thirty billion dollars, that's not their audience. It's not. Clearly. Yeah, it's just but not their audience. Anyone it's can, a bunch of white guys like you who sit around and drink Bud Light and talk about... Yeah, first of all, they're not like me, but they are white. Secondly... <laughs> uh, they got that same beer. They look like They look exactly <laughs> like They look exactly like They look like Alejandro more than me with Fuck this fucking no, new no, facial no, hair. No, man, no. You I could be in a Bud Light commercial right now. True. I would, could bring them back. You could bring, bring back them, Bud Light. Put you back up, put you on the can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> little pink circle on the thing. <laughs> Approve. 
They gotta put somebody because that bitch ruined it. Thirty billion? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Anyway, what am I doing? Um, I'm in a transitional period where I'm doing a fucking lot. A lot in which I can't really expound on, but I will just say like Skid Row Studios, right? I had to take a break because of some uh, partner issues and just some overall management of the business. So I just, um, I'm in my cocoon phase. Let's just say that I, I planted a lot of seeds and over the next couple months, all of them are going to be blooming. New deals, new new everything, new management, new everything, man. So. Good. Okay. Do you feel like, are you happy where your career is currently or are you trying to be, you know, the big monsters that are out there like the Rihanna's? Oh yeah, for you know, sure. I'm, Jay -Z. I'm Is that the path that you're on or are you on a different path? No, no. My my goal has been and ha will always be I want to be the biggest force in music. And um like I said I've been doing this for about 8 9 years now. Right. And a lot of the biggest artists who are the biggest artists, there's this like 10 year rule like like Kendrick K Dot when he was K Dot, he was doing music for like about 10 years. You know, that like it doesn't overnight takes 20,000 hours, you know what I mean? It does, it's not a, but yeah, to make that simple, yeah. Because not even for ego, not even like, I want to be the biggest shit on earth. It's, I make music to talk to people, to inspire people, to change consciousness. And the only way you can do that on a mass level is if more people are listening to you. I can't really affect the world the way I want to on an underground level, so. What do you think is the missing link? Or, or, or what do you think that's, or... What do you think the thing that's stopping you from being that person? He hasn't got the opportunity to suck that dick yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. He already. He already. He already said that he ain't up for that. Yeah. All right. Well, wait till the deal's on the table. Then we'll talk to him. No. <laughs> no. 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 Dave is Yo, not. To be, to Dave be honest, is not doing. To, that. to be honest with you, I'm already that person. So I, I feel like today, right? I'm on this podcast. Right. I'm already Drake. I love it. The world just don't know it yet, you know, but but they but they will because the world catches up. So my 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 problem, not even my problem, but creatively, innovatively, I've been ahead of the curb by years. I've had big artists steal ideas from me. I've had fucking you know I've had label like I've always been ahead of the curve, and sometimes being ahead of the curve is equally as bad as being yeah. behind the curve because. Napoleon Hill, for instance, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, right? He wrote an excerpt and he told his foundation that he can't publish it 60 years till after he died, right? Because people wouldn't mentally be able to even grasp that shit, you know? And sometimes when you're ahead, you know, you just... But the time is catching up and I am the most sufficient. I'm the most creative. I'm the most singularly focused I've ever been in my life. I love and it. um, like when you met me, right? I just got that deal from Warner Records, right? And instantaneously became a millionaire. And I made every mistake a nigga could make with millions of dollars. <laughs> I got a girlfriend. Like, it was like the girlfriend came with the deal. She bled me dry. I got the fucking penthouse. I, I, just, I was just fucking stupid, right? And I feel like God will sometimes give you what you want to, sh to show you better how you can... Uh, just what not to do. So long story short, I've made a lot of mistakes during my career, but all L's are lessons, and I and I genuinely mean that. Like, I, I, I'm i not over here, like, bitter. Like, you know, most people who have done what I've done, for they, they're, like, bitter. They're like, fuck everyone, fuck the industry. Niggas be stealing from me. I'm, I'm like, thank you, God, that I got to experience this shit, and that I, I still am... Like bro, still I'm, here. I'm still, still here. Standing. I'm still standing, and my music is the best it's ever been. Like when I play you this new shit, it's like, so. No, that's the one thing I will say. Josh really kind of exposed me to your music, and yeah. I like it. I think the shit is fire. Thank period. You. I think I, I like it. I think you know you just need to be heard a little bit more, and then or you you know one of them songs go crazy, and you never know from there. Bro, all it takes, yo, that girl, pound town, my booty hole brown. It took one, it took, it took, <laughs> yo, it took one line, just a line of a record, not even right. the whole record, a line of the record to make her in, in, in a global conversation, right? Who knows the hour, the month, the day, but all I know is the more shots you put up, 
the, the better, better chance, chance. <laughs> yeah, of you hitting yeah. one of them. I mean, you got the girl Ice Spice with the song Munch. That yeah. shit went crazy. And, you know, I looked at her uh, Spotify. She has like 35 million monthly listeners. Monthly listeners, That bro. shit's crazy to me. Just one song. You know, she had a few songs after that, but, you know, it's cool. So what's it, your opinion now with the open avenues with Spotify being able to release the music? What are the advantages of signing with a record deal like Warner's? Um, money. Just money. Do you feel like you listen, have independence? Listen, I, I'm gonna tell you something. I 100 percent have my independence because I fought for that contractually. Before I signed with a label like Warner, right? I was like, oh. I'm going to be with this machine and this machine has answers and they know what they're doing and they have departments that know what they're doing and they know how to fucking market music because they're a music company. Something that I found out is that they actually have no idea what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> and I'm not even saying that in a, in a bad way. Everyone tried and I love everyone that tried on my project, right? I love Everyone, let me say that again. I love the president of Warren. I love all you guys. I thank you and am humbled by you guys putting money in my pocket, changing my life, and, and, and giving me an opportunity. So I'm not ungrateful for that. But the one thing that I can say is, is I don't think anyone at any of these fucking labels have an answer. It is the wild fucking West. They don't know how to break records. They don't know... They don't know anything. All they're doing is stuck to a formula that's been matriculated over the years that literally it changes every six months now. Mm. Everything changes. The sound, the types of music, different avenues. That like, like literally when I first got my deal, they took my music, right? And they were like, all right, we're going to take your music and we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And I'm like, but no one cares about that. So, and it didn't do anything. And then the type of nigga that I am, the multi-creative, I'm like spearheading all of these divisions. I'm like doing marketing. I'm doing all my assets. I'm designing all the merch. I'm shooting all the vid. Like I'm literally tentacles into every department. They're like, yo, we were supposed to do that. I'm like, no, but you niggas move too slow. Mm. Is that like that Thanos line? Fine, I'll do it myself. I feel bad. I feel bad for artists who aren't as all encompassing as I am because they would have really been fucked if I didn't know what the fuck I was doing and I would have signed into that deal and I had to wait for people to do shit. I would have been fucked. Do you do you owe them money now? No, no. So you walked away and you were able. Are you still in contracts with them? Nope. No distribution. No nothing. Nope. And you don't owe them any money. Nope. Wow. Okay. And the music that you have out right now, is it still linked to them? No. So it's all yours? Yes. Did, did you have to give up your rights as far as, like, your publishing, nope. your masters? Nope. No. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, shout, no, out you, to, yeah. shout out to my lawyer, Kenny Masalis. I love you so much. And, <laughs> yo, when we negotiated this deal, post or, or like, around the time of the pandemic, I had three other offers on the table from three other major labels, mm -hmm. right? And the negotiations lasted for maybe three or four months because I kept saying no. There's this interview where uh, Cash Money's lawyer was like, yo, we got, I think it was like $60 million or something from, from Universal. And she said the only way we got that money is Birdman just kept saying no. <laughs> um And, and that kind of worked for me as well because they were like, I was like, there's no deal if I don't own my publishing. There's no deal if I don't get this type of percent. There's no deal. No, no, no. And Warner adhered to that. So thank you for that. I just wish things would have been a little bit more organized. I wish that, the, that there was an actual infrastructure instead of just like chaos. <laughs> Did they did they put money behind your projects? <clears throat> they did. Oh, they I don't did. know how I don't know how much money. Oh, okay. I, I don't know, you know, there's numbers, you know, but you know, some of the numbers that were thrown around, I'm like, how can you put that amount of money behind something and not move a needle? So I think some some things are you don't know, man. You don't you don't fucking know. Radio tour, anything? Did they nah, do anything? Nah, 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 man. Ah, that's nah. crazy. It is crazy. But like I said, man, shout out to Warner. Listen, I, I'm really, and I'm not doing this to be political because I'm on, on this show and I'm not trying to hurt people's feelings. I really am grateful for every L that I've taken. 
Like it was a whole experience. It was a whole thing. Fucking Chris Atlas. Shout out Chris. I fucking love you. Oh, and also the one reason why I mainly left is because everyone who was there when I first signed left or or got fired. Like like they got they were gone. Like like I remember the last conversation I had with Warner, the very last one. I was on a call, a Zoom call with all these people, right? And it was a whole new team. And there was this one dude who was talking to me, and he was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this, do, 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 do. I was like, what's your favorite David Sebastian song? You know, man, what's your favorite David Sebastian song? But You don't know my fucking records, dog. So this is what I'm going to do, you guys. I'm going to get the fuck off the phone. I want you to go listen to my discography, and then hit me when, when you know a David Sebastian record. Doesn't make any sense. How can you have a, a department pushing music, and you don't even know the music? I'm talking about this is like... Two years into the deal, after everyone else. Two put- years into the deal. Yeah. Wow. They- yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that sounds sad. All right. Well. <laughs> Fuck. Talking about the music industry, if there were an opportunity to collaborate with Gunna, would you do it? Mm. Sure. Okay. I mean, do you even know the content? But context behind that question, I guess. Yeah, of course. I, I, of course I, I mean, right. nigga, duh. No, <laughs> yeah, no. but well, everyone feels like Gunna told, right? I guess I don't fucking know. He did That's, tell. He kind of told. Listen, listen. I got one it's thing. Video. I got, it's, I got it's, one thing. I got on one video. thing to say to this, and you and you can answer this for yourself, right? Everyone that's on these internet things, like fuck you, you a rat, you a this, you a bitch, you a that, you a this, right? If in their own personal life, they were facing 50 to 100 fucking years mm. behind an act that they didn't do, and they had to throw away their career, their money, their family, their this. It's a tough one. What the fuck you going to do? And, and there's some people's watches, you know, I wouldn't snitch for nobody. Okay. I see you in 100 years, nigga. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, like, and, and you don't even really know how he snitched. I, I don't even know, like, the like, I don't know if he was like, he did. I think he just said, I didn't do it, which accused. I, I, I don't what, even what he, what he, he said. Well, young so, thug still in jail. Yeah, yeah. So and he just uh, got recently denied bond again. So what he said was YSL, Young Stoner Life, is also viewed as a gang and a record label. So when they asked him in court, he said, young, uh, YSL is a gang. <laughs> They say that on records. Yeah, but that's what he said on court, saying like... No, no, but hear me out, though. I'm sure YSL says on songs, we're a gang. We, we, we're, we're... They literally say everything that... And I'm not just talking about them. It's like, if I started a record company called I Kill People. That's my... Re- I Kill Niggas Records, right? And on the record, I'm like, yo, I kill niggas. I shoot niggas. I be slanging dope. Kill niggas. And then somebody told on me and was like, yo, he be killing niggas. I'm like, nigga, the record company's called I Kill Niggas, nigga. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> does that not make any sense or is that... Uh, no, nah, I get it. The, but like, the only thing about it is that there was an attorney that I was kind of talking about some of the stuff about Young Thug. They said Young Thug wasn't on any of the audio that they were taking. Yeah. They say... He, so he wasn't attached to that. They... Uh, I guess it was some other incident... The other person got accused. It seems like they're just really going after Young Thug for yeah. some strange reason. And they really don't have any information, any evidence, nothing that really says that he is this person. They're just trying to make him that person. I mean, person. listen, he's he's rich and he's successful. And I don't know. And he, I, makes I, other, I, and he makes other black people rich and, and successful. And he makes other black people rich, other black people successful. I've heard he's a huge staple in Atlanta. And... A lot of times these motherfuckers just be targeting people to make an example. I, I don't I'm not saying Thug should be behind bars. I hope he gets the fuck out. I don't want to see another black man behind bars. I'm that. just I'm just saying that Gunna, whatever choice that he made, the people who are shitting on him for making that choice, put thirty million dollars in your account at the prime of your career and then take all of that away and lock yourself up and say and see what the fuck you would do. I don't know. I wonder if Young Thug still, how does he feel? I, that's what I would be really... We, we, we don't know. There's that's been, what I want to know. There's been leaked phone calls, but 
Some people are saying it's AI. Nobody knows. He hasn't made no clear statement. The album he released was uh, didn't really say much. It has some cookies here and there, but he recorded it before he went to jail. I got a re- I got a question I just thought of. I wonder who created the concept of snitching and being a rat. Like where that whole the mafia. I did- yeah. I mean, okay. So the I mean, I assume the mafia, but think just really think about that. Like the concept of you can do something and what you do can incriminate me and I have to face the same penalties as you because you did it. And if I say anything about it or do anything about it, then I am I am worse off than the person who did the shit. Well, you got to well, you already know. We I mean, we all from some hood. Yeah, no, for sure. So, and, you know, talking to the police is against the rules. Well, no, not talking to the police. I'm talking about anything. You can snitch on someone's bitch. You know what I mean? You can snitch on... I mean, yeah, anything... Talking, period, is just it's like, ah. Eh, yeah. It's frowned upon. It's just, it just... It just is. It's just... I just be wondering, you like, I'm from, like, I'm from, this, you know, I have family who have done life in prison. I know right. all that shit. I guess what what I'm doing, I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just more into like the psychology behind these philosophies of how they even started. So I'm just letting you guys know if I get in trouble, I'm snitching. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so I don't do anything if I you don't know. Me. I already know. We not we not bring you to that party. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> he is telling. Lord. <laughs> Lord. You gotta know who your friends are. Yeah. Yo, you see, the weekend broke uh, the world the record for the biggest grossing tour. Beat Michael Jackson, three hundred fifty million dollar grossing tour. Michael Jackson had the record. I heard record Taylor at Swift is about to beat that with a billion dollars. Man, country billion. is hot right now. Country a billion is- dollar tour. Yeah, her her tour. How is long about to is she gonna be on tour? Two years? <laughs> no, it's about to break it now. I just seen it. Oh wow! White people pay for those those tickets. If you saw another entertainment, little baby had to cancel some tours because people were not buying his tickets. Yeah, because he sold them too I expensive. I like little baby. I like his music. Uh, nice. The client I have, he's got Taylor Swift tickets. His wife's got Taylor Swift tickets. His wife and his daughter, or some shit like that. They bought them a while ago for like a few hundred dollars. He said they're worth like five grand right now. He oh, said my so wife won't let me sell them. She's tripping. <laughs> That's what I said. Five grand. Five grand a piece. A piece. For a once in a lifetime experience, so people, are, people are spending oh, shit, five thousand dollars every three years. Nah. <laughs> Beyonce, I heard Beyonce's tour is extremely expensive. My friend just went to go see it in Kentucky because to sit, I guess, in the Beehive or whatever they call this area, oh, in Kentucky, it only costs five hundred dollars. But when it comes to LA, they're talking about those tickets are twenty five hundred dollars. That's a lot of fucking money to go to a fucking concert. I'm not going to see anyone for that amount of money in any seat. I'm just not going. I think it's stupid. It's yeah. not. It's not even so like there's no I don't even enjoy dead. concerts there's like no that. To be honest with you, that if they came back from the grave, you would spend twenty five hundred dollars to see Front dead. Row. Yeah, maybe Ooh. Prince, Michael Jackson, Prince, fucking entertainers. But like, I've been to rap concerts. They suck. They're definitely not worth. I mean, Beyonce is a performer too. I'll say he's right. I, I'm a big fan of rap. Me too. But they need to, somebody has to fucking play an I'm instrument tell you or concert, something. Those shits I are not hate entertaining. It. And everybody, I fucking hated Drake's concert. I seen Drake <laughs> and fucking and um, Twenty One Savage. No, nah, the other one, uh, guy from Atlanta. Everyone always Future. Future. I seen that fucking concert when it came to L.A. It wasn't was good. Like, it was not good. This is what they kept doing. It just drove me fucking crazy. <laughs> Every time they get to those singing songs, because usually those were the more popular yeah. songs, they would, fir- first of all, majority of songs, they would only do the hook, the verse, that's it. And they was out of there. So they wouldn't do the full song. And then Drake would never try to sing the hook. I know why he's not trying to sing the hook, because he can't really sing. And I get that. <laughs> but hold you on, get, hold on, but, hold on. Uh-huh. What do you, so... The hook would just play like you wouldn't sing it. No, they would do they would do the hook, not yeah. the singing hooks, just yeah. the regular hooks. Yeah, they would do the hooks, but the singing hooks he would not sing the hook. What he kept saying is, ah, "I know L.A. don't want to hear that. L.A. don't want to hear that. L.A. don't want to hear." It. I'm swear to God, I'm I was there I, the whole time. I was like, "He was like, we do want to hear it." And I, was, I was just like, "Those are your biggest songs, and you're not doing them." And the reason why you're not doing them is because you would be required to sing them. And he's probably, you know, 
See, that's it, my problem too. You know, at, at a, he just wasn't out there singing them. Did you go to the concert? It's like a mixtape. Nah, I didn't go. You been to Drake's concert? They cut him off. I haven't. Oh, nice. I, I only seen Drake when him and Kanye did the Coliseum. Yeah, and shit. I went to that one. Yeah. Okay. No, I went to also Jay Z and uh, Kanye. Shit was fire. Yeah, I, I, I went to that one. When it was on top in, of the cubes. Wood, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when they had the cubes and all that. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. So, Kanye puts on the spectacle. Well, I think it's a little bit of both right there, but I just think that they they went hard because when you went there, the one song they kept doing, how many times they do it over? Like 20 times. See, it was niggas 20 It only did it, yeah, niggas in Paris. They did it nine times when I, for, for the one I was at because, you know, I, think I did they it when they broke the record. in a row, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 I was yeah how do you sell that shit out 10 dates in a 10 row? 10 dates in a row. And that shit was damn near back to back to back to back. They just kept going. Shit was crazy. So some rap concerts are fine. I just think the lower end ones aren't that great. I went to Juvenile in Nebraska one I'm time. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just he was nah, Juvenile, juvenile going hard, dog. in Nebraska. It was early on, and then I guess because <laughs> it wasn't good. Showed up about 45 minutes late. Of course, That's played what they do. for about 40 minutes, and there was two gang fights. Uh, okay, wasn't were great. there some gangs in Nebraska, bro? Look up Omaha. Omar. Represent. They're a bunch of bikers, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you feel? Yeah. Shit, look up North Omaha, bitch. You won't never set foot there. I, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Represent. Actually, uh, Omaha by population or whatever they call that by... What do they call that? Populous? Yeah, whatever. By like as many people compared to as many... is like one of the really high gang activity actually in the country. Can you oh hear Nebraska? Y'all Can need something to do. Swear to God. Y'all need something to do. That's for sure. <laughs> they probably just made up their own games. It's not even Crips and Bloods. They probably just made up their own shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we haven't <laughs> talked. It, this is old news, but we haven't talked about this. Uh, the submarine imploding. Oh, man. Yeah. Sweet. So now that, you know, space travel and like more experiments are taking place, would you, would, if they offer you a free ride to go to space right now, on a commercial flight, would you take mm. it? Yeah, I'm gonna wait a couple years till. Would feel... I be the first one to take? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> would you be the first nigga in that's space? What I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, ah, no. I'll tell you this: with the Jeff Bezos and all those people, I haven't, ha, has a black person gone to space like that? Oh no, like more first of a commercial. Of all, there's been a black astronaut before. Yeah, you yeah, but not astronaut. So I'm talking one. about more of the commercial. Listen, I'm gonna, I, I don't want to really want... I mean, we could get deep into this, but I don't really believe in space. Oh, you a flat earther? I don't think flat earthers don't believe in space. I think they just believe the earth is flat. Do you think they're just know. like fucking with they us and there's dome. nothing out there that's just like a studio? Well, the, the, the CIA released documents a couple years ago that's still on their website that talks about actual proof that this is a holographic universe. This is a holographic plan that there actually is no earth, no anything, that it's kind of like a video game and it kind of just loads as much as your consciousness experiences it. So we're all kind of, the earth is as big as what we can experience as, as we're experiencing it consciously. But there So is, Jupiter, Mars, all these <clears throat> other planets don't exist? I don't think so. I think, I think, I th listen, okay. That's I, tough. That's tough. No, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Let me just. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying that's tough. All right, tough. hear me out. So uh, Men in Black, right? Right. Uh, if you remember the first Men in Black, at the end of the movie, uh, they zoomed out of Earth, right? And Earth was just like a marble and a bag full of... Uh, of uh, uh, um, Earth was a part of a universe that was inside of a marble, right? Inside of a bag of other universes. And aliens were just like playing with it. Do you remember that scene? Yeah. yeah. I was I about it was just like at the end of the movie. It was yeah, just I like... I've never seen the movie. Okay, so <laughs> they just zo zoomed out and Earth was like a little marble inside of this and aliens were just fucking with it, right? And um, in the Bible, right, if we want to talk about the Bible, it says that the earth is a firmament, right? So, and it describes the earth as being pretty much inside of like a snow globe kind of thing, right? When you look at what a firmament is, right? So, yeah, we could be... The firmament, isn't that the wall? No, no. A firmament, the firmament, it talks about how the earth is circular, but it's flat and there's a, a, a globe. Like the Simpsons. Have you ever seen the Simpsons movie where they got yeah. stuck in a big ass fucking... Blah blah right. blah. So why is it illegal right now to go to uh, certain parts of like Antarctica, ice, Antarctica, and shit? Why is it illegal? It's a lot. It's, a, it's supposed to be a lot of um, 
UFO activity. There. A lot of UFO activity. But what if that's just the edge of the firmament, man? Or I heard that. I heard I, everything you're saying. I heard of it. I just don't know. Listen, you, this is my whole thing. Okay, so then why is the world giving us that illusion? Because, what is the purpose of that? Uh, let me tell you what I think it could be. Okay, let's hear it. So one thing that humans need more than anything is purpose. If we have no purpose. That's, they, not, that's some real shit right there. <laughs> if we have no purpose, we can't be controlled. Because, like, if right now if we had inequivocal proof that everything that you've been le learning since you were a kid was complete bullshit, there's no this, there's no space, we're literally living inside of a fucking tiny snow globe. Anarchy. Control and and, and, and well, what the fuck would you do? Would you go to work tomorrow? No. <laughs> you, you wouldn't do anything. But see, but okay, so we talk about shit like this. I don't think that's so, true. Huh? I don't think people would stop doing things. People would definitely stop doing shit. Why? Why would you do it? Nothing because matters you still anymore. have to function. Like there's still gonna be things. You just can't to survive, man. You can't get good. I don't go like, to yeah. work. Or you're I, just don't, gonna, like, I cannot eat food. I'm not saying that people would do nothing. There's like, still just a sit system. There no, no, no. no. It, it would definitely change. be more anarchy. People wouldn't give a fuck. People be robbing people, stealing more. It would just be. It would be chaos. It would for sure. It would 100 like percent. But now this but is why. But, but 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 listen. But this is probably the bigger thing for me. It's like it's not okay. saying the only thing that keeps people in line is the fear of fucking going to hell. No, 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 not eating. What happens to people after they die not, is uh, what keeps society in line. No, no it plays a role. It's it, not. Okay. It's not the the end all beat all. This is my thing though. Okay. I want to know who came up with this diabolical plan. Who put that shit into place where they say no? This is how you can control the society. We can't tell them this. We can't tell them that. Like who did that? So, because that's that's some mastermind ass so, but, shit but that's people, going but on. People, people, I'm, I'm sure you know about like masonry and all that shit, right? Of course, right? Master masons, all that shit, right? Seek, secret, whatever, whatever. There's the propaganda, the propaganda side to it, right? And then I think there is also the real side of I think there was a group of people throughout time who have controlled the secrets to everything, and that those secrets have been passed down, coveted, coveted, right? To to keep things in order, I, and I think we're just inside of that game. I, I think we're that's inside tough. Of now, this is the one thing I will say: the moment a UFO lands on Wilshire Boulevard yeah. and walks out, yeah. everything is over with. That shit is going to be complete chaos after that, because at that point you got to throw the Bible out the window. You ever heard you of Project Bluebeam? No. Okay, so Project Bluebeam um, states that. Um, in China, they're doing it a little bit where they're playing with projections in the sky, where they have these like multi sensor lasers that look like something's in the sky. And it looks like literally you're looking at something, right? And there's this thing called Project Blue Beam where at some point they're going to activate that shit and you're going to look up, right? And you're going to see, and it's going to look like God's talking to us, right? There was a show called Z. That aired for like four episodes. They took that shit off the fucking air, dog. It was so tight. And it was literally one day we were just chilling and then people looked up and there was a fucking alien spaceship that had a projector under it. And it was like some like white woman talking to people like, hey, we come here in peace, blah, 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 blah. And then they started like recruiting humans to go up into the spaceship pretending like they were like on their side, but they were really plotting a hostile takeover for the world and shit. But. Nigga, who knows at this point, you know? I'm just saying when it comes to planets, when it comes to space, like right now they say that we're 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 floating in the middle of nothingness, going a trillion we miles an hour. Can't be that lucky. Move hold on, moving around spiraling other planets that are all moving equally as fast in synchronicity, but we can't feel anything cuz of this thing called fucking gravity. And we can't see anything outside of every, like, it just, it just don't, like, I feel like you ever, like, hear a truth and you're like, why didn't I think of that? I feel like in the future, people are going to be like, them niggas really believe, believe that shit? Like, you know what I mean? Like, really but do you honestly believe, so we're the luckiest people ever. So we're, the, so we're the luckiest planet, we, technology, all this stuff. So you think that none of this is, or do you feel like this is going on on other planets? Because you just told me you don't believe that there are other planets. It's I believe just this us. is going on in different dimensions, not planets. Have you ever heard of... <laughs> okay, so if, okay, you get it, if you get into a rocket ship, yeah. 
and then you go to space, do you think just the simulation will create the stars or just... But that's what I'm saying. Technically, your consciousness would be perceiving it. Now, think about this. If you Google Earth right now, right, tell me why all you're going to find is Photoshopped images of Earth. You won't see any real physical images of Earth. Why is that? With all NASA's supercomputers, all that shit, why does everything look fucking Photoshopped? What? Yeah. Go to Google That's Earth. not true. Google Earth. Google. Why do you think all the photos of Earth are Photoshopped? Just look at them. Because they're done with super sophisticated cameras and they look so good? It's not done with an iPhone. It's not going to look like, oh, look at little Earth down there. I have a question. How many satellites do we supposedly have uh, circling the Earth? Fuck I don't know, a million? Right? So tell me why you never see any fucking satellites in these photos. I don't fucking know. The photos do look a little bit photoshopped. <laughs> 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 but that's not the point. But beyond them being photoshopped, there's supposedly satellites that, that connect to networks that are circling our planet. And they're not in any of these photos. This is my thing. I know Josh personally hates all flat Earthers, so it's it's amazing to hear you quiet right now. Well, it's just a stupid well, fucking yeah. concept. <laughs> it didn't say the, earth, say the was earth was flat. flat. I'm saying the Earth doesn't technically exist. So yeah, but question. you're saying the same shit that they say because they believe in the dome thing I and all that I shit. In the dome. All that little I'm saying there cliff isn't a dome. where the Arctic is, yeah, yeah, and then I'm you cross you, over, and there's on, like I'm seven not, more I'm continents. Not saying, I believe there's a dome. I'm not saying we live in a, a shoebox. I'm not saying any of that. You're I'm saying you don't know what it is. I'm saying that a I don't know what the fuck it is, but b Due to these CIA documents, it's more likely that we're living inside of a video game. And all of this is a holographic projection of consciousness, and there is no sh dome. Okay. So then what's the purpose of life? Experience. Who these have, you, have, you ever read, have you ever read a book called Conversations with God? No. So this book actually changed my life. And if you're listening to this, you should go to the audio book. It's on YouTube. It's free. And this guy, I forgot his name. He was about to kill himself. He was at the brink of his fucking life, right? And he wrote a, a, a note to God, right? Pretty much saying, like, fuck you, like, I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. And then I guess God or this energy took over his hand, and then he just started writing this amazing shit, and he turned it into a book called Conversations with God, which has been, like, published globally, and it's, it's a huge book. Anyway, he said something that really resonated with me. He said that, the idea of good and bad, right, is subjective. It's all how you view what good is and what bad is. We're not here to judge what good and what bad is. We're simply here to experience this thing called life. And due to fear and all of these other outside forces that are keeping us enslaved, we judge ourselves so much that we don't even get to experience the entirety of what this thing called life is. So his shit was literally like, which is also ironically a Satanist, uh, a, a Satanistic, uh, the Satanists uh, live by this mandate, do as thou wilt. Aleister Crowley created, it's called do as thou wilt, which is pretty much do what you want, right? Mm -hmm. So... And this book is pretty much saying you're only here to experience life and to not judge yourself while you're doing it, to make love, to do this, to go do whatever the fuck you want to experience. So maybe. So is this why you're knocking down the big bitches? <laughs> That's yeah, how I I touched him. No, no, yeah, dog, yeah. <laughs> full bro, circle. Bro, yeah. full circle. Yo, <laughs> yo, yes, though. Yes. Because I look, look at, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I am the freest person I know. I am the freest human that I know. I, I know all types no, of. No, no, I, 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 I beg to differ because the transsexual, you're not going out with them. Exactly. No, 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 but hear me but out. He chooses not to. Hear me out, though. Hear me, he's hear, not saying he's hear, forced hear, to do things. He's saying he's the freest person he, he no, knows. No, should be open to he, it. No, 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 no. Free. No, hear, he's hear not saying out. he's the openest person. He's saying he's out. the freest all right, person. Let me hear me out. Hear me out, man. I have a question. There's a habanero pepper that was created in fucking South Chile somewhere, blah, blah, blah. That's the hottest pepper on earth. You could eat it if you wanted to. Will you eat it? No. Okay. We had that experiment downstairs. We did it. <laughs> Certain people elected to do it, and yeah. I, was, I was definitely one of the people who was like, I'm good. Okay, so cool. So you said no. When I say I'm the freest person I know. Right. I know all types of people. I know rich people. I know poor people. I know the homeless. I know 
metaphysicists. I know quantum theorists. I know prostitutes. I know hood niggas. Right. The one thing that everyone I know has in common is they're all bound by two things. Their perception of themselves and their fears. So imagine being in a video game. Imagine being in Grand Theft Auto, right? And you have all the cheat codes. You, you don't have to just play the mission. You could go up. You could go down. You go left, right. You could do whatever the fuck you want, right? But everyone else in the game is programmed. So you're like, yo, let's have fun. Let's do this. And they're like, I can't do that because blah, blah, blah. Yo, let's do this. Everyone I know is like stuck on fucking this mode. And I'm like, so the, the transvestite situation, it's not that I can't do it. That's just not something that suits my taste. But I, I do a hell of other shit that does, you know? So since we're going philosophical, what's your opinion on time? Do you think uh, time is a flat circle and we just perceive it forward, but everything that has happened Before has already we go happened? On, I really have a question on why airplanes fly like this if the earth is flat and in a dome. I don't have a question. What? Like when why, I go to Israel they, yeah. on it's a long illusion. flight, yeah. it's not straight across what? from LA to Israel. How do you That's not how that? we fly. Uh -huh. You fly up over Canada, you fly up over Greenland, Iceland, you come up over England, and then you come down. But how do you because know you're actually going because up and Because it's a over. shorter distance. It's no, a simulation, my friend. It, hold on. First off, that doesn't prove anything. Because if you're. You it, can say this for anything. How do you know? Well, how no, do you I'm know? Not, well, how do you know? No, it could all be fake. Was in, it could all be fake. Hold on, I wasn't about it to say. Not, it I might not to, actually be on there. I wasn't about if to I say. If I live my life that way. Hold then, on, I wasn't about to say. How do you know? <laughs> what I was about to say is, imagine a flat surface, right? You're right here, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to get over here. Mm -hmm. And you're on a fucking plane. On a flat surface, the fastest way is straight. Hold on. Listen, man. Less fuel, straight. Listen. Go ahead. Straight. Boom. Straight across on a flat surface. So how the fuck you know you're not just going straight? Because the people have told me. <laughs> ah, the people. Exactly. How the fuck you know you're not well, just going the straight? They got you a little thing just... that tracks you in the plane. Well, the thing that you know that you can't go straight is because they have fly zones. And if everybody start interrupting the fly zones, these planes are going to crash into each other. 100%. So there's definitely a method to get certain places. So therefore, people won't have an accident. That's that's pretty obvious. Like, but like I said, do you think that these major airlines give a fuck about that? They care yes. about saving money on fuel, so they're talking shortest distances, which is why they, they fly are. to the top of and the that's globe why they created and then the back fly down because it's shorter. To do certain things. That it wouldn't sense. be shorter if the earth was fucking flat. You got less flat. people going to Europe than you have people going saying. to New York. Hold, 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 so it's going to be Josh, nice. You You asked me a question about time. Time and no, space. He did. No, I know. I know. Alejandro. Alejandro. Every morning, I started this practice. It's called quantum jumping. Have any of you guys ever heard of that? I've heard of it. Okay. Uh, a guy named Burke yeah. Goldman kind of came fucking up with Ant -Man. it. Fucking Ant-Man. Everyone's heard of it. <laughs> it's it's it's, a, it's an Ant Man. Ant Man is a he like quantum leaps. That's like his deal. That's the last movie. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. That's every movie. That's how he becomes small and big. Okay. So peep. So peep. So peep. So this guy named Burt Goldman came up with this concept that there are a trillion different yous in different dimensions, all living right now. There's the highest version of yourself. There's the lowest version of yourself. There's the you ever see that movie Everything Everywhere All at Once? Yes. So. That concept, right? Yeah. There's you in every iteration, right? And you can close your eyes, meditate, right? Walk through a hallway, go through a portal, and this is all in your mind. This is all in your imagination, right? And you can say, I want to meet my highest self. You walk through a door, and there your higher self is, right? And you can look at your higher self and what they're doing. You can ask them questions. You can say, yo, I'm having a problem with this. What did you do? And you'll get real life answers i've been doing this man and it's actually crazy a how your imagination works because right but b i've been getting real life like this dude talks about how he learned how to paint by doing this he visited his painter self and his painter self gave him advice he learned how to do da, 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 da. do you believe that that's possible that that's there's tough. a doppelganger you somewhere in another universe that you can communicate with and get answers from. Uh, it's I mean, possible. There's obviously different dimensions, so um, yeah. I guess. I just don't think I can I'll meet them. What do like, you mean? I, 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 I'm not knocking the theory that there are other dimensions, 
But I feel like without a Rick and Morty portal gun, I'm never going to meet my the Rick and Por- The Rick and Morty portal gun is your mind. So listen, uh, and, and real quick, what you would do is you would close your eyes. You would see three, three times in your mind to, to, just to get your body to get at a relaxed state. Once you're in a relaxed state, you'd walk down a, um, a path, like a, a narrow hallway. At the end of the narrow hallway, there'll be a door. You open up the door, right? And that door is a portal. You walk through that portal. Now you're in space. You're in nothingness, right? And there's doors on every side. Just to, just with your mind, see. do you see what I'm saying right now? You can, can you see it kind of? I, yeah, I can see it. Okay. Well, I want to hear about your quantum jumping that you do every single morning. That's what he's talking that's about. That's, that's, what, talk, that's what I'm about. talking about. Okay, I want to hear about your quantum jumping. <laughs> that's what he's talking, he's talking about. about. I, I want to hear about the quantum <laughs> okay, jumping. So, okay, he's creating so, no, 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 his no, mind. No, no, no. Okay, I'm, I'm about to tell you. No, 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 no. I want to hear about the quantum jumping okay, so, my so some self. niggas can understand. <laughs> right, I'll give it to you so niggas can understand. Listen, listen, listen. listen. My highest self, I'll be vulnerable, right? So my highest self is at the peak of... Well, actually, it's kind of... It's at- How do you know that your mind is not just constructing your highest self as though you imagine your highest exactly self in your right. mind? It's not actually your highest self in the universe. No, no, hear me out, hear me out. Because you're hey, probably like a can you doctor it? or listen, something. It, no, no, listen. <laughs> I actually met my I highest... I'm a porn star. Man, can you hear me out? Look, at this is some real <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> shit, bro. I had been quantum jumping, and the whole time I was seeing myself as this successful blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. And then one one of the last times I quantum jumped, I met me, and I was fucking hovering over, like, this canyon, like, literally meditating butt-ass naked. And, and I asked him, he was like, you don't have to be anything to be everything. This is what myself is telling me. He's like, you've been, you've been thinking that because you had this and you did this and this, that this would make you your highest self, but your your actual higher self has nothing. Are drugs involved with this? <laughs> I just want to know. No. Like, because sometimes people use drugs to help access these things. No, no. And I'm just trying to understand it a little bit more. I, I have a question. Uh, you, you, know, you, you couldn't have built what you've built not having a divine sense of who you are, correct? Do you know who you are? Yes. Okay. I know exactly who I am. Who okay. are you, AD? I'm a... I'm a person that's willing to work harder than everyone else. Y'all heard it here first. AD's a person. He keeps trying to say he's an alien, and I knew he wasn't. He said he's a person. I'm the only uh, listen, alien in this fucking follower. room. So what he I, said it here on camera. No, I just I, I think that everyone <laughs> has the ability to learn anything. Me personally. It just takes trial and error and getting up every single day and working. And that's how I was able to accomplish what I've accomplished. I outworked everyone. That's it. Okay. Okay, but what you're what you just said you were, right? Technically But I think anyone can do it. No, no, for sure. Anyone can do it. I'm getting just gotta get up every day and do it. I'm getting deeper than if people can do it. You are a fucking avatar. You aren't you. Your ego created who you are, how you see yourself, and how you see yourself. Your mind, the, your mind plays a huge role in who you're going to be, which is absolutely true. hundred percent true because you have to actually believe your bullshit. Yeah, exa- exactly. So what I'm saying is, is if your mind can give you the belief to create your reality, then your mind can technically. Like, what I'm saying, like, you can Google this shit, like, neuroscientists literally hook little fucking things up to monks uh, and change your neuroscience and shit. Maybe I'm just not getting it. I don't understand quantum jumping still. I don't know how you access it. I don't know how you're doing it. quantum jumping, he's saying he can access it through meditation. Okay, so the, so you're sitting. Scientists so you're sitting, would probably so disagree. You're, so you're sitting down every morning, <laughs> every morning, and meditating and visiting your other selves Selves. in different dimensions in in different dimensions and you're saying that that's not your imagination you be doing that shit huh that's why she'd be late to work and shit she's in a different fucking dimension (laughs) in another dimension she on time (laughs) she's on time hey man how'd I get here on time (laughs) 100% yeah yeah so look so so what I'm saying is it's through meditation right through meditation so Neuroscientists say that your no, brain, your brain. Fuck the neuroscientists. Just tell me about your experience. Yeah, I just want to hear about my how experience. do you do it. So you're doing it through meditating, so through I'm your meditation, my eyes, right? And through Yo. meditation, through meditation, I am 
closing my eyes and I am accessing different portals within myself because the universe, what's the first word of that? You, the universe, you, you have access to all of these things. The, the, uh, what is the, uh, something, Akashic records and all this shit. All of this ancient information is inside of you. That's why your eyeball looks like the fucking universe. That's why your 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 bot your your liver looks like this. we're all a part of this thing called the universe. Anyway, so by meditating, right? I'll say what do I want to experience today? What is my intention, right? Okay, I want to know what I should do in this business deal, right? Let's say it's like I, I have a question. I want to know what I would do in this business deal. Okay, I'm going to go visit the David Sebastian, who's like the fucking, um, who's the dude who owns Virgin, uh, Virgin Mobile, uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. No. What the fuck? No. No, the billionaire. <laughs> no, you're uh, talking about. Go ahead. The guy who owns, uh, uh, Virgin the airline and all that yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. the hotels and well, all just that Whatever stuff. billionaire you could think of. I'm, okay. I'm fucking Elon Warren Musk, Buffett. Right? Warren, I'm. <laughs> Warren Buffett. I'm Warren Buffett, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm the David that's Warren Buffett in this parallel universe, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go visit him, and I'm going to go tell him my problem. And in my mind, using my imagination, he's going to talk back to me, and he's going to mm. tell me something from his perspective of my highest self in that. So technically, you're getting game from yourself in these different universes of... But how you how you know yeah, that, yeah, that, how that, you know that, 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 that was hold on, hold on. I found out something I can tell you that can make this all make sense. Okay. You just told me, you said, I believe anyone can do anything Absolutely. if they put their mind to it. Okay. Peep this. Three months ago, I had a studio session with a producer that didn't really go the way I wanted it to go. I was very, very um frustrated because my entire career I've been at the mercy of producers. I've been at the mercy of their time, at their ego, all of this. And if I knew how to produce my own music, that would be of huge benefit to me. I left the studio session. I went home and I quantum fucking jumped for an hour. And I went to my highest self, who was the superstar producer. And I literally just sat in a chair and I looked at him work. And I know this sounds crazy as fuck, but I literally just sat in the back of a studio and literally watched this nigga work, right? And then it, there's there's a practice in quantum jumping where you stand behind the you and then you step inside of them and then you kind of just see what they're doing, right? Long story short, I got out of that meditation. I learned some jewels in that. Yo, download this. Yo, all you need is B. Because I heard him kept saying, what's the BPM? What's the key? So I was like, what? So when I got out, I was like, okay, I need to know the key and I need to know the BPM. What what what, what was he using? Da, da, da. Let me tell you something, bro. In the last three months, my nigga, I've gotten six placements from producing for major artists. I've produced over like maybe 150 beats in the last three months by myself without the help of anyone. And if I played them for I played them for if I played them for you in the car, you'd be like, this sounds fucking next level. And I did all of that by just mirroring But my you f- are a producer. I'm not. I've never produced a record in my life. Yeah, but you kind of know. Like, you've been in this bi- music business. Listen, you've been in the I enough rooms. I thought he was a producer. No, I don't. I thought he was everything. Listen. Mm-hmm. Listen. I like to hype people up. Okay. Well, that part wasn't true. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is true. It is look, true. Look, look, I'm a producer in the sense that I produce other producers. All of my music you've heard from me was me with producers like, yo, do this, do this, do this. But I never was able to program a fucking 808. Okay. You know what I mean? I've never programmed. I got it. I don't know. Quantum jumping, man. Anyone out there open-minded to use their... While you're jumping jump to get these lottery hold on. numbers. While you're jumping, try to choke one of those motherfuckers out and then come back out after you killed him and see if you're stronger. Like the movie The One with Jet Li. He goes to all these different dimensions, and once you kill one of your other selves, you absorb their power and their energy until there's only one of them left, and then he can do like wild, crazy shit, like jump. Oh. All this tr- shit. See, there's movies about Choke a motherfucker out, Dave. Fa- I gotta watch the one. The one. I might need to go fucking murk all these niggas. Ah, and just you gotta choke them out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, just don't even ask. Just absorb their shit. Just go in there and choke one out. When Josh, you have, you, have you quad them jumped? Nah, I only did mushrooms and talked to my ancestors for a while. Okay. So I do believe there are things on the inside of us that we can access for sure. But the mushrooms definitely helped me.
Okay, yeah, talking about mushrooms. When you quantum leap, do you take any supplements, weed, alcohol? That's what we or you, He said no. Or you have to be completely sober. Do you know what? Do you know what's in the inside of your pineal gland in the center of your mind? I, I'm stupid, so no. Nothing you, because you know? it's it's been blocked by. It's been yes. blocked by so years like you, of. You know what DMT is? You don't see that yeah, mark yeah, on her. Yeah, Look yeah, at yeah. that mark on her head. She marks her head. No one knows that that's not a real mark there. She marks her head, her pin. Pineal gland every single day. Every I didn't want to ask, you know, because I didn't was like. I didn't oh no! When she came, when she came to work, noticed when she came to work and it was not in the middle anymore. It was off to the left. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> That's what I asked her. It was like her third day. I was like, "Okay, you got to explain to me this mark." This on shit your moves. Head. So you know what the fuck I'm talking about? Then you tapped in. So listen, DMT, right? Um, DMT is a gas that secretes from your mind when you dream and when you die. Like when you die, this gas fucking just secretes in your mind it's in the center of your brain you can access it through meditation so i don't need shrooms and i don't need acid they help. yes josh drugs you don't need drugs <laughs> to do this stop having fucking excuses to be a goddamn drug addict i can't sit i can't sit still for five seconds to even get deep enough into meditation because you're trying. not trying. You're not trying. No, I, don't, I, I don't. Nah. I, I, you know what it is for me? I, I got try. too many fucking bills to be meditating. <laughs> That's for me. Mm. I got, I got bills. I got to pay everybody. Wait, so going back with dreams... So would you say when I dream about me having experiences, that's just me in another dimension? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, listen. Everything I'm saying right now... And there's something that this Burt Goldman dude does say. He's like, hey, listen to me, you guys. All of this could literally just be your fucking imagination, right? There could be no alternate dimensions. There could be none of that. Mm. All of this could be you just fucking with your imagination. But if it helps you, if you learn from it and you grow from it and it has all the effects. Bro, do any of you guys know who Neville Goddard is? No. Goddard, the philosopher? Yes, Neville Goddard. So this path that I'm on all sparked from my homie sending me a video from a philosopher named Neville Goddard. He was around the 50s, the 40s, and he had this video called How to Use Your Imagination. That changed my life. That's how We Are God was created. That's how pretty much everything that I've became has, was created because I always had my imagination. I got to see this video. I just didn't know how to use my imagination. And this video pretty much states that you can weaponize your imagination to literally... Create the reality you want. It talks about this woman, right, who whose um, parent died, right? Her parent died, and she was sad, and she was crying in the rain, right? She was, like, outside in Hawaii, and she was crying in the rain. And she closed her eyes, and she visualized the rain being missed from a ship because she always wanted to take a trip somewhere. So she visualized her tears being missed from the, the spray from a ship. And she like sunk herself in that emotion. You have to take your emotion and mix it with your imagination to manifest it. Right. Anyway, a couple weeks later, she gets a, a message in the mail that someone else died or something. And then they they sent her on a boat on the same ship that she visualized. Da, 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 da. So it's like you use your imagination, you sink it with an emotion and then you can manifest what the fuck you want to manifest. I'm going to be a fucking billionaire. Well, first you have to actually believe it. And then you got to do stuff to get you there. Yo, when, when you met me before the penthouse and shit, I was living. You met me when I was living in my office, right? Mm -hmm. You met me when I was living yes, in an you office. Said, you used to come and shower at the gym. I used to shower at your gym. I lived in an office smaller than this on a fucking. It was horrible. And then I found this fucking secret and every day I'd wake up and I would meditate and I would quant quantum jump into a penthouse and literally seven months later, multi-million dollar deal, same penthouse I was visualizing, head to floor ceilings. Nigga, it's like, shit works. Yeah, just glad everybody can access it. We still need the bums out here. Everyone can access. Still need these fucking bums out here, AD, <laughs> to, for society to work. Don't call them bums, dog. What the fuck, nigga? Bum, oh, bums is a derogatory word now, too? <laughs> it's been a derogatory word. Get the word. fuck out of here. <laughs> what do you call them? I'm going to call you a slave. Me? Slave. Go ahead. Slave. Probably was. <laughs> De Je Josh was definitely black in his previous life yeah. for sure. Somebody he doesn't have any white friends. Somebody called him the white Nipsey Hustle in the comments. Yeah, I've seen that. 
He didn't have. Uh, he has no whisk, white friends. Whiskey. What? Josh. Josh. Whipsy. Whipsy. Josh. Why? <laughs> Josh. Why don't you have any white friends? I thought we talked about this before, <laughs> man. We talk about this too much. I don't know. I don't know. Have, I'm not into no, frat shit. No I don't white know. friends at all. I don't do frat shit. I think he's a fucking C CIA agent. Yeah, they planted me in the black community. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. I love white people. I gotta say that. I do. You haven't been like around enough. People. I love all people, but I definitely... <laughs> you know, in our community, though, being black, like, sometimes there's, like, a frown on if you're, like, fucking with, like, an absorbing amount of white people and shit. But, like, all of my white friends since I was a kid, like, grow, like... Like, they put me on to different culinary shit, different experiences. You know what I mean? Like, all my nigga friends, they just want to talk about fucking bitches and where the backwoods at and shit. Hey, man, know? all my white friends would be a good-ass sitcom. It would. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Like, the one black dude just yeah. with hella, like, friends, but, like, yeah. it's just, like... Just always leaving to go to the suburbs and shit. On an adventure with his new white friend every day? They don't make TV like that. That sounds like that would have been great in the 90s. All my white friends. <laughs> well, no, talk, let's do it. Well, yeah. talking about TV, you have any opinion on the actor-writer strike? The first time since 1960 that both of them, you know, strike at the same time. Mm. Does chocolate melt the same way under the sun as it would in a bread maker? There you yes. Go. Exactly. What? <laughs> Okay, yeah. Can you expand on that? So <laughs> Can you expand on that? So you do care? Or you don't? Listen, bro. <laughs> if a vanilla wafer is chocolate, why don't they call it a chocolate wafer? Is it chocolate? If a vanilla wafer... <laughs> I got lost in the beginning. That's what you guys got to know about Dave. You ain't hung around Dave enough. Yeah, he just gonna start saying shit that don't make sense now. Why don't they call it a chocolate wafer? Yeah, if there's a vanilla a vanilla wafer that's flavored chocolate, why do they still call it vanilla wafers and not a chocolate wafer? Is that an they actual thing? They don't call thing? it a chocolate wafer. They don't. Is that an actual thing? I don't buy chocolate wafers. That's the thing. So I wouldn't know. There's no such thing. There could I've be never a, heard of a chocolate wafer. There could be like a vanilla wafers with chocolate sprinkles. Like the actual wafer? Like the... Like the fucking wafer. Like it's a goddamn little, cookie. That's not a wafer. There's an actual Listen, wafer. Listen, to answer your answer, bro, <laughs> it'll, it'll never be the same after you think about it. What's the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit Seriously though We were talking about that submarine I think when we got off Into your quantum leap story Yeah I don't know how We got off No one answered anything what About they, that submarine <laughs> Yo what if they Yo what if they quantum leap Nigga out the ocean They, were, another they were just like We're out of here Let's tell them We fucking went down In this submarine So Didn't they pull the sub up No it's like in pieces Exploded they pulled pieces so of it up. If you were in the sub, which way would you rather die? You starve for like a week until there's no more oxygen in the submarine or just the implosion? You don't even know you're dead. You're like, whoop, and it's done. I mean, I think the implosion. The implosion. Nobody Fuck wants to shit. slowly die. I want to slowly die. I, I, I would I want to slowly Listen, die. I want to know hope. that I die. I need hope. <laughs> hope that <laughs> they're coming I want to know I die. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you just wake up like, what just happened? No, I want to know what I... think it's going to happen? At least I want want to know before I die. Like, damn, I fucked up. (laughs) Yo, yo, is there any part in any of you guys that question Can your spirit swim? I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. (laughs) Like, if you die, you know, like when you die on Earth and your spirit leaves you, what if you're down under all that pressure in the ocean? Can your spirit (laughs) swim? (laughs) Are you trapped in the ocean? Are you it's trapped like, in the ocean forever? To spirit be swimming lessons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's so funny? I was watching this old ass show, and this is this is fucking some off the wall shit. But I was watching some old ass show, and it was fucking like with John Wayne, and John Wayne was like the little kid was just like. I don't know how to swim it. And they were like in front of a lake. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how to swim. He's like, what do you mean you don't know how to swim? <laughs> Grabbed his ass and just, just threw him his in the ass fucking into the fucking water. And I his learned. mother, his mother came running out. It's like, he can't swim. 
He'll figure it out. <laughs> like, kick your leg, boy. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. I was like, listen, we don't do that shit anymore. We uh, coddle each other any, now. We don't, it's not this rough way of doing things. And I, I, I don't know. I'm indifferent about it. Here's Fuck another question. Throw me in the ocean. Let me figure this shit out. Here's another question I have. What? Are there black ghosts? Absolutely. Because you never, but I mean, like, you know how the no. ghost is portrayed as like see through white? Yeah, like but maybe your a... shadow's just your good. No, no, they ghost. gray it out, but you can still be black. <laughs> can you, though? You can't be black and be a ghost? Think, but think about what the concept of a ghost is. It's just a white the, sheet the, 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 ghost. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm not about the, the fictitious, like, scary, not scary farm thing. But what is a spirit, though? Do you think your spirit has a, a, a race? Like you, I hope so. Like when I you hope die, you spirit <laughs> world, they are fucking racist. <laughs> when you die, you think your spirit sounds like, "Hey, what's up, dog? Hey, what up? Hey, Can dog? you imagine you go to the spirit world and be some racist <laughs> shit? Going, it's like I thought we figured this shit out. Hey, your spirits go this way. You, you're, you go this way, spirit. <laughs> you know why I pulled you over? <laughs> <laughs> your spirit's going too fast, heaven. <laughs> Racism in the spirit world. I love it. Yo, Fuck yeah. That's actually hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, I don't I don't I don't know if there is. I don't know. You think they figured it out after you died? They're over there like, damn, they're still struggling with that shit on earth. I don't think that I don't think that I think like I think if you ever seen Avatar? You ever seen Avatar, the movie Avatar? Yeah. So you understand the concept of like how their spirit would lock into like a body, right? Right. So I just think we're just meat bodies. We're like bacteria to the earth. And we're literally spirits that inhabit this meat suit. And we're just using it to like experience in it. But we need our ego. We need, I'm black. My name is this. I'm this old to be able to identify ourselves. Because if not, you would just be like, I am. And you would just be everything. You know what I mean? Like, so you need this differentiation of like color. No, I, I, I get all of that, but I just, I don't know. Have you ever seen an albino roach in the summertime? No, nope. shit is so goddamn funny. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is an albino roach in the sun. Yeah, and, and like in the sun, like an albino roach in the sun. Is this no. like a metaphor or like an actual this thing? It's definitely got to be a, Okay, okay. This is an albino anything. Hey, first of all, I've never seen an albino roach, let Ever. alone in the sun. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> the first part. You lost me because I never seen one of those. Well, just Google it when you get a chance. Man. I will. Yeah, I'm gonna. Hopefully, it doesn't destroy my phone. Some sort of weird code. Well, listen, man. For for everyone that's looking out, you know, I I really do. I'm grateful for this uh, situation. Your herbs actually uh, changed my life at a certain point in my in my life. I actually need to get some more parasite herbs because all them parasites came back. But I will remember that the most clear and focused I've ever been in my life was around that time penthouse days with my ex-girlfriend and for, for the 30 days that was the girl with the short hair yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The bitch I thought you guys were the perfect of, fucking couple yeah I know but I really thought you, I thought y'all yeah. was like that's because I'm it was like, like he dating. marrying this motherfucker it's cause it was like I he thought, was dating himself no I thought she was cool he was cool they they seemed like they really loved each other it was I thought it was some real love there yo did, did you see what happened to my apartment downtown with the with the SWAT team and the whole like yeah that shit was that shit was wild she was wild that was with our girlfriend. Me and her old girl had a... That was like a crazy situation. I probably shouldn't talk about that right now. Here's but, the um, real question. Well, why, why Didn't you... y'all get hit by a car on a scooter? We got hit three times by cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think... Like, you know what? Let me, I got to get rid of this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker Yo, all my spiritual advisors, it was like, David, you got to let her go or you're going to kill her. Because... <laughs> that, no, because your... No, they were saying because your angels and your guidance... Is protecting you so much that it's literally fucking doing disastrous shit to this woman to get her away from you, man. I remember she came to the so gym with y'all that. Broke up is over. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's been over. Yeah. Damn, I, I swear y'all was like getting you, married. But you, but you but you know what made it over? Like, like can I tell y'all what what made it over? Let's hear it. I never forget it. <laughs> I never forget it. I was shooting a music video, and the concept was I'm gonna take women from. The community who helped the homeless and just do amazing things who probably never had like really good treatment. I'm gonna rent a yacht. 
I rent a little baby yacht. I'm a full makeover, everything, helicopter ride for my shit. mama. Remember that shit? Mm. I'm going to do all this stuff, and I'm going to give these women the best time of their life. That's right? dope. So on the yacht, right, she was on the yacht, and she wasn't doing nothing. She was, like, on her phone, like, texting shit. But we needed help because we were understaffed. And my partner, Sara, was running yeah, around. Yeah. And, and my partner, Sara, was like, you're not going to help? you just going to be sipping champagne? She was like, bitch, that's my... I don't got to do nothing, right? So my, yeah. my partner bucked up on her like, what? Like, you support your... So that wasn't the reason why it was over, right? So that ended up becoming a big argument, right? The next day was the helicopter ride where I was taking my mom on a helicopter ride. And I told my my ex, I was like, I don't think you should come today because your only purpose for being there would be to to help. And since you're not really helping, I need that for, like, help. So she stays at home. Right? I have the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all laughing? Why y'all laughing? Look, when, was, when, when, look, when, look, yeah. look at, like, when the, she stayed home, I had, I had the best day of my life. Had a revelation. No, no, I had a, like, it, it was a real life revelation. I had the best day of my life. Got to kick with my mom, helicopterize all this shit. And then after that, as I was headed home, she sent me a text. She was like, how the fuck was your day? <laughs> like, just on some evil ass, Damn. like, nigga, I hope you had fun without me. And I remember looking at my phone and I was like, it's over. This girl's in my pit house, not paying a dollar worth of bills, not doing the dishes, not doing it, do, not doing anything, living the lap of fucking luxury, and then has the audacity at a, at a moment's notice to fuck up my mood. Mm. I literally walked in the door. I said, "Hey, um, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> pack your shit. You, you got you gotta go, man. Um, so, Dave, before you even get out of here, because yeah. coming to the end of the show, yeah, tell us." Your best memory about you try, you accomplishing your goals in the music business or a story. Just tell us a story. We try to get everyone to come on here to tell us a story. Um, my best. Anything that you're wanting, you want to share. A good moment, bad moment, anything. Shit. Um. Hey man, didn't you shut down the subway or some shit? Or you shut you shut down some shit in LA? I, I did, I did. But that's not the story for this <laughs> this junction. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you. A, 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 Let's hear it. Um, Story time with Dave. Okay. Uh, I was on the freeway. I didn't know what to do with my life. I was, I was a starving artist. I was headed to a video shoot. I had a, a, one of those uh, final destination moments where I seen something happening to me bad on this freeway. I tell my friend, get off the freeway. He gets off the freeway. We're off the one, uh, 110 freeway. He's like, where do you want me to go? I was like, just pull over here. He pulls up to the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Mm -hmm. I get out the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. He's like, so what? I'm like, I'm not going to shoot no more. I'm just going to go in here. He's like, all right, nigga, bye. I walk into the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. I have my, um, my sketchbook with me. I sit down, and something just said, draw, just draw. So I just start drawing. People come up to me, oh, that looks nice, da 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 this African kid, darkest African kid I've ever seen. His name was Gabriel. <laughs> this nigga was fucking black. <laughs> no, it was like it was like godly black. It was like the color of your shirt black. <laughs> and he said, "Hey, can you draw a picture of me?" And I said, "Sure." So I draw a little picture of him. He's like, "I'm so grateful." And I'm like, and it felt like he was like fucking. He felt like an angel, man. It was right. crazy. Like, I'm so grateful. I his name was Gabriel. He and his name was Gabriel. He walks off. Next thing I know, I see him walking behind this white dude who was like six three, no shoes on, gold toenails, which I later found out were real gold. He had real fourteen karat gold to to toenail polish, SpongeBob SquarePants fucking pajamas, and a diamond ring that was like. Right, and this nigga walks up to me, and he literally gets on his knees, bows down to me, and he says, "You're the one." And I said, "What?" He said, "You're the one. I've been looking for you." The guy with no shoes. The guy with no shoes. Okay. So I'm thinking this nigga's crazy, right? Absolutely. <laughs> right? This nigga's crazy. Come to find out, he was a billionaire. So 
He's like, you're the one. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, Gabriel showed me your, your work, and he told me what you do. Because I was talking to Gabriel, and he was like, I'm here um, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing a big real estate play, right? They rented the penthouse floor, and he's like, I have a meeting, and I would like for you to come to it. And I'm like, okay. He's like... I want you to be the creative director over this 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 development I'm doing. It's an underground development. Now, at this point, you've probably been like, this nigga's crazy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I did too. But I told you, I am an explorer of life. He said, in an hour, I want you to tell the concierge, blah, 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 they'll let you up. I waited around, and I went up the stairs. I get up the stairs... And there's a long table filled with lawyer-looking motherfuckers in nice suits. And he's at the head of the table with his fucking dirty-ass feet kicked up on the fucking table. And he's like, oh, meat, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make the story shorter than, than it needs to be. But the point is, is he told me, pick a number. And I'm going to wire it to your account tomorrow so you know that this is real. And then I'm going to get you a flight. And I'm going to fly you to Arizona because that's where his headquarters were. What the fuck was your number? I kind of regret it to this day. Please don't say 50,000. 50,000. What the fuck? How did you know? How did you know? Because we always undervalue ourselves. I would have been like, yeah, I need $5 million. If we plan, we might as well play big. Fuck. But go on. I said $50,000. Mm. I woke up the next day in my mom's house. I called my Bank of America. You have 51000 I know. You were sick. I was sick. I was like, fuck. Sick. <laughs> sick. Long story short, I caught a flight, got to Arizona, got picked up by a gaggle of Africans from the fucking, they were fucking the lost children of Sudan. You know, you know what happened to the lost children of Sudan? Mm-mm. There was like a whole like apartheid type of situation in Sudan. He actually flew out like 30 of these kids who were like being fucking soldiers and like crazy shit. Flew them out and they all worked for him. So I, I was greeted by this guy named Baba. And when I first got off, they pulled up in like little fucking old school Mercedes, all African. I'm like, what did I just get myself into? Like, I thought like I go to his house. They take me to a mountain in Sedona. They drive me to Sedona. He says, give me your phone. I said, for what? He says, this is one of those times you got to make a decision. You either give me your phone and you walk to the top of this mountain and I don't want to see you till you come down or I give you your phone back or you keep your phone and I, and I fly you back and you get to keep the money. I'm an adventurer in life. I walked up the mountain. Good. I walked up the fucking mountain Got to the top, felt accomplished, came down, and the next four months, I made so much money. He was just, I wasn't really doing anything, man. It was like playtime for this nigga. This nigga was like, he had reverse autism. This is the type of person he was. He was crazy. He would go to a restaurant and have them bring him plates. And if you said something stupid or something, he would just break a fucking plate. And niggas would be looking at this nigga like he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just be sitting there. I would like, get a plate for this show. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be breaking shit left and right. <laughs> Do you still have contact with this person? No, so let me tell let me tell you what happened. So long story short, uh, he had a little private jet. I, that's where I flew around. Like, I, he flew me to different places. I flew in my ex-girlfriend at the time. I was like, yo, I'm about to have a... I need you to go to this airport. I got a jet. She's like, what the fuck? Flew a jet, chart. Like, I was just being just a nigga with some new money, right? I was young. Long story short, um, I, I, I took a bunch of money and brought uh, music equipment in this house. So he would be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm like, I'm making music. And he told me that he didn't want me to make music. And he was like, you got to make a decision. You either stay here and you're all in on this or you go make music. Right now, mind you, I brought flat screen TVs. I went to guitar center and brought three drum sets, put them together. I was living like Richie fucking rich dog. This on my, my soul. One day Baba says, Hey, I'm, I'm taking you to go meet with uh, David. His name was David. I'm taking you to go meet with David. Right. I'm like, do I need anything? He's like, no. I told my dog to get in because I had my dog with me, my little dog. We get in the car. We're driving for like two hours. 
I'm like, where are we going? He's like, don't worry. We're, don't worry. This nigga drops me off at a hotel in the middle of fucking Arizona. And he's like, David said you made your choice. Because I, to- I told Dave, I was like, I'm, I want to do music. So I didn't get to keep any of my belongings. I probably had, I don't know, like $80,000 left in my bank account because I made money and da, 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 after spending whatever. But I didn't think it was just going to end like that. I ended up staying in that hotel for like four or five days, and I made a call to someone named St. John, who was a music, a music manager, who I was trying to get to manage me before this whole shit happened, and he wouldn't because he looked at me as like a stylist, right? And I hit him, and I told him the story, and I said, listen, I'm, I'm coming back to L.A. Or, or I, I, I told him the story, and he drove to come get me. Mm. I came back to L.A., and the next day, I went in the studio, and uh, I used to collect vinyls, right? And I had this sample called Pussy Marijuana. Pussy, pussy, pussy marijuana. It was a sample from this group called the Brazilian Girls. I said, all I need is one studio session. It'll change my life. I recorded that record, Pussy Marijuana. And within a month, 10 million views on World Star. Number one on Break the Crates at the time. Every label, Sylvia Rohn, like, it was Fucking nuts, dog. First song I ever put out had deals on the table, all this shit. And that was the beginning of my music career. Mm. Do you regret not hanging out with the crazy white dude with no shoes? No. There's not a bone in my body that regrets it. Okay. And you know why? Why? Because... Because it sounds fucking weird. And he's going to make you do some weird, <laughs> freaky shit not, eventually. Not, sound, like a, sound like a cult <laughs> your no, ass no. went out into? No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me let me let me, t- let me tell you why. It's stupid. Let- Alejandro, eventually it was gonna get to. It was gonna get freaky. It was, yeah, it was. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm pretty sure he's just using those little Sudanian kids that he stole from another country for his own. What, David? Was it? Was, 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 was there any freaky this shit going on? Sounds weird. It was. It was. It, it, it was. It was. It was actually like he had, he had a crib in Aspen, and we would fly there. He would wake everyone up at five o'clock. We would meditate on the mountain. He had private chefs like this. It was like, it was beautiful. Like, I have ADHD, right? So he used to mandatory make me with a calligraphy pen, write out, draw the symbol for God for like six hours straight. I would just be in all white silk fucking drawing God in mm-hmm. fucking calligraphy. Did Cult. He, yeah. Did no, like- but it wasn't about, it doesn't even matter. That's what everyone <laughs> says who was in it. <laughs> you asked the reason why I don't Let regret me it is this. <laughs> Yo, if I gave you a million dollars, right? If I gave you ten million dollars, and I stuck you in Scottsdale, Arizona, mm-hmm. there's only a few things you can do every day. Well, right, Scottsdale is a party town. No, it is. I was in Scottsdale, but it wasn't. This if you're we gonna do doing, some hypothetical we thing where I would turn down ten million dollars to go have fun, you're wrong. No, hear me out. Because I'm not. I'm taking that ten million and, and I'm Josh not doing a motherfucking thing guy. ever again. Yeah. <laughs> listen, well, listen. What I'm what I'm trying to tell you, my personal shit was all I did every day was go to the Scottsdale Mall, buy Louis Vuitton, buy a bunch of shit that I didn't need. All that shit I don't even have anymore, right? Yeah, he kicked you eat, out and eat <laughs> and eat. And party sometimes at these like hyper white fucking Scottsdale parties, right? And out every and, and if and at a certain point it felt boring, dog. It was just like like what it just felt boring. I didn't feel like I was living in my fucking purpose. Mm. I feel like when I came back and even when I went broke again, I was living in my purpose. Now I'm doing you know what I mean? Your purpose is bigger than your net worth at some point. Because as long as you're living in your purpose, you'll always like I'm good. I'm telling you right now on this thing and you're you're you do business. I'm going to be a multi billionaire. And I'm not saying that like on some I'm going to be a billion dollars. My mind, the way I see things creative, like I, I, I'm going to change the paradigm of art and business and how they merge. But I'm living in my purpose to do so. So that was a story. David Sebastian. That shit crazy. All right. All right. What's well, shit? Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for coming in, Come, Dave. Coming in, sharing. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, except you cigarette-smoking bastards. Leave them alone. <laughs> we'll see you on the next Josh, one. Josh is very sensitive. You I'm not hear? sensitive. They're sensitive. <laughs> I've never been insulted by anyone except the, the cigarette community. Me? 
My tear ducts dried up 17 years ago. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I know you've been trying to call me all day, but girl, he just left and I, I had to wait till he left to call you because I know I said I was gonna break up with him, but last night he did like a full 180. He was an animal. Where did this come from? Because you know, I've been telling you, it's been like kind of dull and like something changed and I don't know what his secret is, but I'm trying to find out. His secret, Sword Vitality.